36 handicap, looking to improve on general contact because the misses right now can be both thin and fat. You've included both angles here and we'll get back to this face on because most of your lesson will pertain to that angle, but we'll knock out a couple things here from this side first. As you get set up, the hands drop a little bit and the upper body selects into a more comfortable rounded position. I would try to stay a little taller, your knee flex looks okay, just get that chest to stay a little bit more upright so that you don't slouch down. The lower you are, the more likelihood you have of trending to the fat side. And if you're hitting your irons from the fairway, I would prefer you to miss more slightly thin than slightly fat. Around the greens, that can change, but fuller shots, usually thin to win. All right, setting up. After we drop the hands, I'll get your path line up and we'll knock out, like I said, a couple things that you're doing well. First, the takeaway is outside of your path line, keeping the face closed, which is a pretty decent position. You've noted limited mobility in the body, so I don't expect to see a huge turn, but you do work the club a little bit behind you. But here we can see the exposure of a very 10 finger strong grip, which hinges the club rather quickly and sets a very closed face angle. And usually to make a closed face by a swing work, you need lots of rotation of the lower body in the downswing. Now, even as you've noted limited mobility, you're not getting a lot of shoulder turn back, but you are getting a lot of hip turn back. And with that much hip rotation coming back, you need to make up for that coming through and then some. Now, I note decent mobility in the lower body, but you need a lot more turn than that if you're going to make such a closed face position work throughout the swing and stop yourself from hitting hooks or releasing it early and chunking it. So I would first work on the grip, which we'll see in another second, but try to increase your shoulder turn against your hip turn to the top. And again, we'll make a point of that in the other side, but just paying attention to how much hip rotation in the backswing you have will make it difficult to get enough hip rotation to drive off that back foot and clear through. So now let's jump over to the other side where we can see your grip now really separated in the hands and that will, as we're gonna see in this takeaway, quickly hinge that club straight up and you've already set your angle about halfway back at your P3 position. Best you can do is hold on to that angle and try to turn your body, like we said, coming through so, so that you can strike it without flipping it, but hard to see what's going on here. I imagine there's a lot of release going on with the hands, just trying to save face on your way through. But a couple tips you can take away from this side view first would be to widen your stance and flare your feet, because with this very narrow stance and square position, it makes it tough to get your body to clear through in the downswing. Let's watch this left foot as you transition down. Going to turn back, left knee flexes in, and as I noted, decent mobility of the upper bo or lower body, hip turn. As you drive through, that back foot, lead foot, is trying to square up, and then will eventually squeeze and flare open as your hips are turning through to the finish. You'll find it much easier to get those hips open sooner and more easily if you begin with your foot flared out like this. So keep your back foot nice and square, but widen that up and flare out that left toe to help some more mobility coming through. Lastly, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but work on these in pieces. If you're hitting behind the ball more than you're hitting it thin, it's likely due to this upper body sway off the ball. And when you're doing that move, that's why you don't get a lot of upper body rotation and you get the lower body rotation. So try instead of turning the hips back as much as you can, tilt down in that left shoulder. You see it working flat and across the screen here rather than working down to the ball. And that's a rather involved move to get that shoulder tilt. But if you do so, you'd be likely not to sway as far off and you would be able to keep your head more steady and over the ball. So. Lots of information. Good luck digesting that. Sendaswing.com.